Hello there, it's Vincent Clive from Blitz Creek Brushes. Today I'm going to be showing you how to paint one of Games Workshop's fell wogs. So, first of all, things you're going to need. You're going to need your own fell wog. got one here ready to paint for you guys. You're going to need a handful of paint brushes. I've personally got a large one for dry brushing, uh, a medium sized one for your base coats and your washes, and a small one for the details. Um, also, what we're going to need is a pad of kitchen towel just for uh, getting rid of the excess paint from the dry brush and we're going to need our paints now in the description below is going to be a full list of all the paints that I use um, so if you want you can pause the video now and go and grab those now you're back let's begin so um, for this guide I'm going to be painting up the wogs to so this standard here the same standard that can be seen in my blog um, it's difficult to see lighting's not great but I hope you get the idea um, if you want any pictures you can, again you can click below in the blog link um, so first thing we're going to need is um, this medium sized brush because we're actually not going to be dry brushing we're going to be just putting on a base coat the first colour I use is um, black grey that's a, the Vallejo range and it's number 862 so shake it up to make sure the paint's nicely mixed and we just need a little, little blob of it here on our palette now um, my paints are, some of my paints are at the end of their life so it can take a little while to get all the paint that I need out so that's it, we just need a few drops uh, make sure you've got some nice clean water the first thing we're going to do is just add a bit of water so that it uh, spreads easier on the model and doesn't obscure any of the detail and this is a base coat, we're literally going to base coat the entire warg with this colour paint so you're literally going to take your warg and get good coverage all over it doesn't matter if you do this in one or two coats, even three but it should go over in the first coat. Now, what you need to make sure is that you've base coated your model first. Now, I use um, Halford's Matte Black Spray. I've been using that for years after swapping from Games Workshop's Black Spray. It covers really well. It's nice size for a very cheap price, and um, you'll get a lot of models undercoated. So, um, I'm just going to carry on painting this, and you can do the same. Uh, and when I've finished, I'll come back to you. So we're back again, I've finished painting the black grey onto the model and you can still see the shine from the wet paint. So what we need to do now is let this dry off, take about 10 or 15 minutes. Best thing to do really is to work in batches, you could paint a, the group of six up and by the time you've finished the, uh, the last coat on the, the last model, the first model will be ready to start again. So I'm going to pop this down and we'll come back to you when we're ready to go on to the next stage. Okay, so we're back again. Um, our warg is now pretty much dry from the first coat. Um, it's important that you, you're patient and you wait for it to finish drying because the next stage is going to be a dry brush, which um, if we have any wet paint on the model, that's going to be picked up straight away by the brush again. Um, so what we're going to do now is dispense with this small brush or medium brush and move on to this nice chunky dry brush. Now the way we're going to do this is we're going to do a few simple paint mixes and that's so we get a nice um, gradient from the, the black grey we've got now up to a, a 2 to 1 um, German field grey. So we're going to get our black grey again. What we're going to do is I want about a, a, a 1 to 1 black grey to German grey to begin with. So I'm going to try and get a similar sized small blob of paint. Now if you are doing more than one walk obviously you'd put a bit more on but you want to try and keep it as one to one um, so just got a little little blob there and what I'm going to try and do is get a similar size of this German field grain that's 830 of the Vallejo range and uh, just put a similar size oh, shake it out first it's, it, does, it doesn't need to be an exact science um, because we're painting something that's natural, it's, it's fur, it's a, a natural creature so there's always going to be slight variation so what we're going to do is take our nice chunky brush and use that to mix it all up, get it nice and coated. Now this is where the kitchen roll comes in, we need to take off quite a large amount of the paint um, so that what we're left with is, is almost essentially dry pigment on the brush. So you can see when you, you paint a line, you get almost no paint off. Now what you're going to do with that is you're going to take your WAG model and you want to try and paint from the light source. So with these models, the light is going to be shining on top of them. So you want to paint downwards rather than painting up or side to side. So I'm just going to make sure that's where we want it. So start at the front and work your way to the back and just paint downwards. Um, 
you're, you're looking to try and catch the raised areas of fur, the ribs, um, the hair on the tail, the bone structure in the leg. And you maybe put a finger underneath to steady it so that it doesn't bounce so much because they're only mounted on their one legs, their single back leg. So, so from top to bottom, top to bottom. And that will mean that the area where the, the paint sits is then on the upward facing surface so it looks like light is shining down from above. So once you've done the one side, just make sure you get the face, move your way around. And again, do the same this way, top to bottom. Now, the reason I do the color mixes when I'm dry brushing is so that the, the gradient is, is quite small. It's not so noticeable. Um, tendency people do with dry brushing is to, to paint quite contrasting colors on top of one another. So um, it really stands out and it doesn't look as natural then. Whereas with these wogs, obviously it's, it's it's fur, you want it to look as natural as possible. So that's why we're going to do colour gradients. Right. And once you're done with that, um, you'll be able to see in front of you, there'll be a nice, um, nice difference between the bits you've highlighted. Now I prefer to do quite a light dry brush. Don't forget to dry brush across the top, I should say, just to make sure we get that area where the light is shining. Um, I, I prefer to do quite a light dry brush and that helps it to look a bit more natural. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add a bit more German field grey, 830 to that mix. Um, again, I want this to be about a two to one mix, so, um, but it's, it's not important so much because we're painting something quite natural. So it just needs to be roughly right. Um, so I've just added another tiny blob on there. I'm just going to mix it around and hopefully you'll be able to see there's quite a difference in colour. Now we want this to be um, as light or lighter than the previous one, just so that we get the previous shade showing up underneath. Um, so again, we need to take most of this off uh, until almost none comes off the brush when we wipe it on the kitchen towel. And then the same thing again, start from top to bottom where the light's shining, start at one end and work your way to the other and just paint downwards. Just like this, top to bottom. And uh, you'll see on the one in front of you, you get quite a significant change now between what was originally painted and the colour that you've got now. Make sure to catch the face and the front paws, top to bottom, every time. And it might look like I'm doing down, up, down, up, down, up, but I'm actually bringing my brush away from the model every time I come back up. Can you see that there? And that will give the impression that light is shining from above uh, the sun. The same with the tail, make sure we catch the bones on the back so they stand up quite prominently on these. Make sure you get the fur on top of the head and uh, the, the face. And there we go. That's um, stage one, two and three now completed. Now stage four, this is the bit that's going to take a bit of time to dry because what we do now, or what I do now, is um, blend all these colours in together using one of Games Workshop's washes. It's probably my, <laughs> my favourite wash to use. Um, with this dry brush we're just going to dunk it in our water, use the kitchen towel we've got to dry it out again. We're going to need it later, so make sure it's nice and dried out and just pop that to one side. You can be quite rough with this. The rougher you are with your dry brush, the better really, because um, it helps create a more natural look when you're putting the paint on. I've had this dry brush now for quite a long time. It's one of the Blue Games Workshop brushes, which I hope you can see there. That's probably eight, nine, ten years old. Um, I swear by this thing, I think it's brilliant. Uh, so we're going to come back to the medium brush. You don't need to wait for the dry brush to dry because, as it sounds, it is a dry brush. So the paint isn't actually uh, so wet. So we don't need to, to wait for it to dry. We're just going to get our Agracta shade. That's my favourite one. Recommend it. Use it on pretty much everything. So give it a nice shake to make sure all the pigments mixed in. And what we're going to do now is, being none too careful, Make sure we cover the whole model. Um, I wouldn't put too thick a coat on. The only reason I say that is because it tends to go quite shiny. Um, so the amount I've used now is probably what I will cover the whole side with. Um, I won't dip my brush back in the pot. It's unlikely I would anyway. Um, so I'll paint this whole side with it. And you can see it brings the colour much in line with the ones I've already done. 
and make sure you get in all the cracks and crevices that's where in particular we need it to be um, so while I finish painting uh, the wash onto this I'll just pause it and come back to you when it's completed okay so I'm back after about 30 seconds as you can see the whole model is nice and shiny now it means I've got the uh, wash everywhere make sure it gets in all the nooks and crannies that's particularly where we want it um, now the reason I, I chose uh, Agrax Earthshade a uh, quite a brown wash as opposed to something like Null Noir which is a, a more black wash is that um, I wanted these wolves to have quite a warm uh, appearance I didn't want them to be um, like the grey wolves of, of our world which are quite a, quite a cool grey quite a, a, a white and black kind of grey I wanted these to look more more like brown kind of wolves but still be grey if, if that makes any sense at all so as I say this bit's the bit that takes a while we've got to wait for the wash to dry now this bit depending on how heavy you've put it on can take anywhere from 15 minutes to 45 minutes so we'll come back when that's completed and we're back uh, so that took a little while longer than I expected but uh, about 30 minutes later it's now all dry uh, and we're going to carry on with a bit more dry brushing. So um, the next stage is to paint a, a dry brush of, of German field grey and then we're going to do one to one German field grey and dark sand here which as you can see is quite a, a yellowy creamy kind of colour. Then we're going to do two to one dark sand to uh, German field grey. So we'll start off with the German field grey. Uh, and again, you don't need to leave any drying time in between any of these, um, but we will be finishing um, with another wash of Agrax Earthshade, Earthshade, and that is just to tie everything in together so that it doesn't look like this. there's jarring transitions between the shades. So I'm just going to start dry brushing with uh, German Field Grey. So just a small amount in there. We don't need a lot, um, if I can get any at all. There we go, just a nice sort of pea sized blob, maybe a bit smaller about a grain of rice. Now make sure the brush is nice and dry we're just going to load the brush up and then brush it off. So again we're not leaving much behind and again we're going to start with the the raised area, it'll hit the raised areas and we'll drag it down so that it looks like the light is shining from above. We'll start from the face. I'm just going to, yep yeah, I'm happy with that. So top to bottom I'm not doing so many passes over this time because I want it to be a bit a bit less um, heavily shaded as we go up through the colours. So make sure you hit the face. The, the face is the most important part of the model as far as I'm concerned. Um, you'll see that in my, my fully painted ones uh, where I put a lot more um, emphasis on the face just because I think there's such a large amount of character in that. So there we go. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, so we'll leave what we've got in there. We're just going to add a tiniest amount of of dark sand, and this is a uh, Vallejo color 847. Just mix that in. Um, I think that's a bit light, so I'm going to add a bit more German field grey. Just a small amount, just because uh, th that's kind of the color I want the final the final highlight to be. So. Okay, that's better. Um, now, rather than getting another bit, I'm just going to fold this over, have a bit of kitchen roll, and use the, the bit in the middle and get rid of most of that paint again. Just uh, swirl your brush, drag it across, just so that you almost get nothing coming off when you drag it, just like that along the bottom there. I don't know if you can see. And uh, same again, top to bottom, front to back. Bit of a t extra attention on the face. You can see it's really um, brightening up the fur now. Uh, and you really don't want to press down too hard, you don't want to go across the model too many times because this is quite a light colour. And we do want to keep the, the the wolf quite looking fairly dark, especially in the recesses. So just be gentle, um, make sure you get the back and the top, that's where the most light would be. Just drag across the top like that. And then, um, tiniest amount, get back to that colour we had a few minutes ago. There we go, that will do. Uh, that is about two to one. Uh, and that colour there, again, make sure almost nothing's coming off. And this one we really do need to be to be light with, otherwise you won't see anything that was underneath it. Just very quick pass. Um, don't ling don't paint something too much. We just want to get the idea that there's there's a there's a very light shade at the top. There we go. 
as you can see I'm not spending too much in one area I'm not brushing one area lots of times I'm just trying to get it across the whole of the model and then along the top and that's that dry brush done uh, I'm just going to take a quick look and see if I'm happy with it um, I might want to go back yeah I'm going to go back for another pass with that one um, this is entirely subjective really but I want to make sure I get some on the, the main there a bit more there we go and make sure we get the front and there we go I think I'm fairly happy with that so I'm um, just going to wash my brush off uh, that's the last dry brush we'll be doing um, for the model itself we'll do one more on the base but that's it now so we can clean off our dry brush and put that to one side uh, there we go just nice and dry that's all we need to do and then uh, I'll keep this just so we can dry our brushes on in a bit um, what we're going to do now is the, the final Agrax earth shade for the skin so shake it up again and uh, you want a similar maybe a slightly lighter coat than what we did um for for the first stage so as as, as with the first stage we're just going to cover the whole model and it really helps to 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 mute the the gray color to bring a bit of brown in um and to uh blend the colors so i'm going to do this off camera because it's quite fiddly and uh, i need to sit down to do it so i'll be back in a bit so there we go, we're back again. Um, as you can see, it's all shiny from the wash. So this again will take about 20, 30 minutes to dry. Um, it's important that um, you, when you settle down to the wash stage, you do you wash the entire model in one go. Um, if you if, if it's as it is now in, in a single particular color, and that's because it's it's almost impossible to blend the lines where one wash has dried and a new wash meets. It will always be darker than. Um, than either side of that that line where the two washes meet so it's important that um, you don't stop washing halfway through and let it half dry and it's important that once you've you've applied it you leave it to dry um, so um, I'll rejoin you again in about 20 minutes okay so we've uh, it's all dried now and I've moved you in a little bit closer so we can get a good look at the finish of the skin and we can proceed with the details so that that is the sorry the skin that is the fur all done now um bar one highlight which i'm gonna do in uh, a minute but first i want to start some of the detail work um that is uh, the inner ear the gums the teeth the eyes the nose and the claws so i'm going to do the is first and this is again going to use some simple color mixes of corn red um, German field gray and uh, Bugman's glow as well so first thing first is some corn red I'm going to try not to get too many shadows on the camera so uh, I'm going to grab the water over there um, again this is about a one-to-one -one mix of corn red and Bugman uh, and German field gray so just going to get some red. You don't need too much because it's only a very small area that we're painting. Again, you'd, you'd need a bit more if you were painting the um, painting six in one go, which is what I recommend. Just get the smallest amount. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to put the grey on the palette separately so that I can control just how much goes in. Um, like I say, it's a one to one. Uh, make sure you mix it up well. So it's uh, an even colour. Um, that's about the amount of grey that I want. So there we go. Like that. That will do. Um, just wash your brushes off. We're not going to use that big chunk of brush. What we're going to start to use is the detail brush. Uh, and what I prefer is the Winsor Newton Series 7. Uh, and this is uh, zero. Um, we're just going to load the brush up. And then inside the ear just here and on the other side we're just going to paint this what you need to do is leave a, a nice rim of gray around the ear but we want to get we want to get a good a good um a good patch of of, of this pinky gray color just like that doesn't need to be too neat it's 
it's not a space marine after all, it is just a natural natural creature. Um, and as we go over to the other side, we do the same again, get it right into the middle of the ear, and then leave a nice grey furry edge. That will come in handy later. So there we go, that's it, that, it's that simple. Uh, and as that dries, we can work on another area. So we're now going to do the the one to one corn red and Bugman's glow, and this is what I actually use for the gums as well. So we're going to get some more corn red here, put it into another little area of our paint pot. Um, again, don't need a lot because the mo we're only doing one model, not six. So there it is. There, sure we've got a clean brush. Don't want to contaminate our skin with extra red tone. This is quite a dark skin colour. We're just aiming to make the, the red a bit more pink. So we're going to mix that up nicely. There we are. Make sure we wash our brush. Dry off on the, the tissue. I'm going to add in a little bit of water using our, our fine detail brush again. Um, you want this to be quite fluid. Um, and what I paint with this is, um, it's a bit of a highlight for the, the pink on the ear, but also um, I paint the gums. And on some of the walks, they've got some scars around their face from like battle wounds. Um, but on this one, it doesn't, as you can, you can probably see there. There's, there's no battle wounds on this fellow. So we're just going to make sure we get the tongue. Um, don't worry about the teeth at this stage. We're going to paint them all in separately in a bit. But we just want the whole mouth area to be to be this pink colour and it, it looks quite bright but uh, we will dull that down significantly in a minute. Um, the reason that I've, I've covered the teeth is so that you get you don't get any grey in between I mean I know they probably don't brush their teeth but uh, I'd rather have a dark pink look than a grey look if it's all the same. Um, Not being try not to do the skin, don't get any on the skin, but don't worry about getting any on the teeth there. There we go. So that's all of the mouth done in this nice pink colour. Uh, and now, what we're going to do is do the ears. So, we need to look where the, the, the sun is shining because we, we don't want to highlight something that would be in shadow. So, as we can see, if, if I were to paint the top of the ears there, that would actually be the bit that's in shadow. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the bottom of the ear because this bit would be more likely to catch the light as, as the ears pin back against the head. It's just the bottom. It's just to give a, a, a flash of brighter colour just to liven the model up and the same with this one just along the bottom there none, none too neat none too perfect and that's it just like that and that's the gums done no scars so we can let that dry and move on so while that's drying um, I'm gonna wash my brush off and paint the, the nose and the claw now the nose and the claw I do quite a dark color if you look at um, dogs um, that are grey in particular got a very black nose, um, very dark grey claws, so I just use uh, black grey for that, which is Vallejo 862. So don't need a lot, just a little bit on there. And a um, little bit of water just to make it flow a bit better. And just paint the nose, so that's just a little triangle at the front. Um, on the model there are, there are lines that make it easy to see where the nose starts and finishes, and just a bit across the top there. Um, we're going to do a wash over this in a minute. So that's the nose done. And then paint the claws. So try not to get any in between the claws, just the claws themselves. Um, and I don't actually add anything to the claws at this point. Uh, they're not a focal part of the model, so as long as they look dark, that's, I'm happy with that. It's a bit 
or water, just to help it flow a bit easier. Because it's, uh, it's not flowing very well at the minute. So Make sure as well when you paint the claws that you paint the claws that are sort of halfway up the leg. It's quite difficult to see in there. Not halfway up the leg, but they're higher up on the foot. They're the thumb sort of claw. Um, particularly on the back legs just here. Just get a little splash of colour on there. Just helps to to make it look the complete article. So that's those done. Done the claws and the nose. Um, so yeah, the uh, the fleshy kind of coloured stuff is now dry. So all we're going to do is we're going to give that uh, a wash. Make sure our brush has no more grey on it. I'm going to give that a wash of Agrax Earthshade. I told you it was my favourite one. <laughs> Shake it up again bit on there and then try and keep this within the ear itself so you're not going onto the grey but you're staying on the red the ready pink just a big splash of colour there splash a bit there and that will help to, to dull that down so it looks a bit less less mousy pink and a bit more wog kind of red and the same with the gums and the tongue this will take a bit of time to dry so I may have to leave you and come back again but um, and that helps. They look a bit more decaying gums now, a bit of gum decay. Haven't seen the dentist for a while, a bit of red raw. That's much better. So that's that done. Um, I'm not going to leave you because uh, there's one thing I can be getting on with while that dries. Um, And that is the, the final highlight on the fur. Now, I really want certain parts of this model to pop out and to be the focal point. And in particular, that's the face and, and features on the body, like the ribs and the, the bones across the back. So using the final colour we used for um, the fur dry brushing, which is a two to one dark sand to German field grey, um, I'm just going to pick out some of those features. So just need a tiny amount of paint because we're going to use barely any. Um, it's just to pick out the big features, the the ones I want to highlight, the ones you want to highlight. So there we go. I'm going to use a, a bigger brush to mix all that in, so a bit quicker. And I may darken it up a bit at this point. It's quite light. Um, you can see the original colour here. Um, there's quite a difference. So yeah, I'm going to add a bit more German feel grey to that. Uh, again, it's just trial and error, picking colours that you're happy with. It's not a perfect science, um, painting miniatures. Uh, some people make it into a perfect science and that's good for them, but I prefer just to, to paint with what I'm happy with. Um, so uh, I'll just check my old walks for reference, make sure I'm not not too bright. Yeah, it's still still a bit bright, so I'll add a bit more German field grey. <coughs> it's the problem with having uh, well used paint. Don't always come out. So um, rather than mixing it into the whole amount, I'm just going to create a bit here, and that's much more like the original we had. So I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. That bit just there. So now we're going to get our fine brush out again, and this is a bit of detail work. So be patient. Um, try and steady your elbows on the table if you can, just so that there's less movement in your arm. So uh, you want this to be to be quite watery, I'd say, not not quite milky consistency. You're not airbrushing it on, but you want it to to flow very well so that you can make nice long brush strokes. So. Um, we want to. I want to pay particular attention to these kind of to these hairs on the face, and this is this is to make the face really pop. So, just get those in there. There's three. You can you can do a bit on some of the smaller ones if you like, and I think I did on on these ones just here. This helps to frame the face off nicely, and same on the other side. So there's the three long hairs. 
tufts of hair I suppose and then there's the three shorter ones just under and again this just helps to to frame the outline of the face nicely and what I'm also going to do is the top of the ears so um, just a nice thin line running across the top there it just helps to pick that out a bit same on the other side you see just along the top there I'm trying to steady this walk um, bouncing around on his one leg so just along the top like that and maybe a little bit underneath as well just to frame the ear nicely um, areas that I'm going to pick out on the face as well along the eyebrow line so I'm just going to bring in one of my other wogs for reference um, so I want to paint across this here just to highlight the, the wrinkles in his face where he's snarling sorry I keep knocking the camera and then um, the eyebrows as well just along, just along the eyebrow line, that just helps to highlight the eyes, which we'll paint in a bit. Um, same on both sides. And also um, a bit in the middle there, just adding, adding a wrinkle. Um, where else I like to do is just under the eye helps to draw attention into the eye area so there's a kind of raised cheek here so just paint that um, same on the other side this is subject to taste some you could go wild and re-highlight all the fur but I just think less is more in this situation um, we can add a bit around the mouth, although you must make sure the paint, is f the Agrax Shade wash is fully dried before you do this. So where his lip curls up there? So not too much, not too much. Less is more. Um, I'm just going to touch up these spine, spiny bits. There we go. Right, so that's the, the face done. Um, it will really make the face pop on your miniature a bit more. Uh, and now I'm going to just finish off with the, the body of the model. So I want to, to make the ribs pop up, to make them look like they're quite prominent, quite pronounced. He's not had a good meal in a few days. So just, just nice long strokes. I'm not pressing the brush down against the model. I'm just moving my arm closer so that the, the, the paint, as long as it's flowing nicely, will do the work for you. That's those on that side. And same on this side. I'm not not pressing down, I'm just letting the, the paint do the work. There's a few more ribs to highlight on this side. There we go. Um, as well as the ribs, there's also the, the bones on the back, which we're going to pick out. You could do quite a large area, but I'm just going to do single lines on each bone, just to give the idea, just to raise attention to their prominence and again that's about it less is more just giving the idea that they're there and there's a few other areas to pick out on the model the haunches where they rise up um, and they create quite a definite line so like you see here just a nice a nice line just helps to make them pop there. There's not really much of one on the other side, but what there is is that stretch of, of fur here, stretch of skin and fur, so we're raising the prominence of that, raising, bringing attention into it. Um, areas where you might also like to pick out a, a web, you can see bones sticking out so on the leg here, so we're just going to gentle strokes, I'm not trying to get lots of paint on it, we're just increasing the prominence of it. A bit more water, it's not flowing as well as it was before, there we go. Um, just so. um, and where else I like to do it is on the paws, just so we can get a bit of differentiation between each of the digits there. 
um, it's obviously too much. Just enough. Just enough to make them noticeable. Um, it's not an exact science. It is personal taste, personal preference. Don't go too far. But equally, this stage is important to get to do. Just, just to make things a bit more... to really stand out make sure the other side's standing out as well yeah that's it and you can leave it like that and you can see the two side by side there up to a similar stage okay right so um, now we come to the to the very last bits of detail the 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 fleshy, pinky flesh stuff's dry, the agrax shade is dry. I'm just going to paint the teeth and the eyes. So the teeth I use um, three colours, um, Xandri Dust, Ushabti Bone and Screaming Skull. Um, obviously dark is first, working up to light. Just want a bit of paint there. You don't need much again because it's fine detail, there's not a lot of it. And we're only painting the one here. So um, the key with this is is same with the the final uh, fur shade is to, to take your time to be careful it flowing nicely and you want to pick out every single one of the teeth individually we're not dragging our brush across that way we're dragging it down so we get the whole tooth I may need to pause the camera and do this off camera so I can get all the, the detail in properly going all right so far so yeah top there's four one two three four in between the fangs Some row of teeth. Fairly happy with that. I don't know if you see that there. Hopefully you can. Let's move these out of the way so it focuses on the walk a bit more. There we go. As soon as that's dry, you can paint on the Ushabti bone and then the Screaming Skull for a final highlight. Now obviously you want to leave a little bit of the, the colour before showing through, just so you provide that, that gradient. So, and because it's not a lot of paint, you can almost paint on top of it straight away. And, and even if at this stage it is still a bit wet, it will just help with a bit of a blend. Now this is quite a difficult position I'm sitting in, trying to paint this around the camera, so I'm just gonna move. straight from the top. Um, okay, I don't know if you can see that there. So just leaving a bit towards the gum line of the Zandri dust. It's harder to do that on the smaller teeth I know but that's the kind of goal. Again we want it to be nice and flowing. The 
smaller teeth, you almost kind of you can almost kind of jab your brush in the end. It sounds a bit awkward. But make sure you get nice differentiation between the teeth on the front. It's quite difficult because the sculpt isn't brilliant on the front teeth due to limitations of plastic moulding. As long as you know roughly where they're meant to be, you can paint that kind of detail in. So that's the top set done. And literally the exact same for the bottom. So you can tell I'm concentrating because I've gone very quiet. So, um, so that's that done. <coughs> and we're just going to finish off the teeth with Screaming Skull. And um, this is, is like right for the very edges, so you don't want too much of this on there. Um, in fact, I think on the five I did, it was it was literally just on the fangs that I painted this. Um, so I'm gonna do the same on this here, just on the fangs. You just wanna make them look really quite white, quite menacing. They get a lot of work chomping on meat and tearing flesh, so make them quite bright. And that will, uh, Help them stand out. Make sure we get the, the tops of the teeth nicely done. see where they come to a point um, and I think that's it for the teeth so last thing we've got to do is the eyes um, I went for quite a yellowy coloured eye with a with a dark grey sorry I told you all a bit of a fib earlier um, I said I used black grey for the claws and the nose but I actually use German grey which is 995 which I'm going to go back and do now very quickly um, it's just a much darker grey, darker, more bluey kind of grey. Um, sorry, I got that wrong. I won't do it again. I probably will. Who am I kidding? Um, I will put a little disclaimer on the video so you all know already. So just go back over the claws that we did earlier. The claws and the nose. It's not, it's not a lot to do. <coughs> sorry about that. The colours actually look very similar, but uh, when they're out of the tube, this one's actually a lot darker grey. Almost a more dark bluey grey, I would have said. So you can't really see there where I'm holding it. Hopefully you have to see the earlier stuff. This is more difficult than it looks. Do. So I will get onto the eyes now, and that is uh, tan yellow. Although on, I don't know if you can see there on that side it says tank yellow, and on the other side it says tan yellow. I don't know what it actually is, um, and whether there's actually any difference. Um, but anyway, tan or tank yellow. Um, I didn't want to use something like a and and dark, so I just felt that was a bit too bright. So. We don't need much of this again because we're only doing a single. Um, Vallejo paints um, 
they se separate quite a lot actually so they can need quite a bit of shaking to get them mixed in the tube so I'll try that again there we go and they should come out quite thick um, when when you've not used them for a while they can come out quite runny um, so now we're just going to do the eyes um, they've got they've got quite easy to paint eyes as far as models go they're quite bulging so it's easy to, to see them and as long as you've got a steady hand it's quite easy to, to fill them in Yeah, there's that one there, and then on the other side, should get nice, nice coverage. Fill in the fill in the hole of the eye. Um, if you look at any animal eye, they they tend not to show too much in the way of whites. They're all all iris. see there the two eyes look bright glowing yellow um, to finish it off we're just going to use that uh, German grey 995 uh, make sure it's nicely watered down um, you just want a the smallest amount on the tip of your brush and, and this bit's important if you if you're painting the pupil it's, it's incredibly easy to make it look cross-eyed or like it's like it's looking opposite where it's looking. So try and um, paint from one angle. So try and get that dot on from the front, not from the side and the side, because it just won't look right. So, so we're going front on, and this is quite difficult because I'm not able to get it as close to me as I normally like it. But that just one dot. Um, if you go back and try and chop and change it, it will end up looking a bit. Um, like that, so it's best to just try and get it once and get it once right rather than go back and try and even it up or got it once. There we go. So it's got two pupils now. That's it um, in terms of painting. So the warg is complete. All that's left to do is the base now. Um, I personally I'm trying to base all my models in the same way just so that they, they look consistent on the tabletop. So uh, I'm using Vallejo's Chocolate Brown 872, um, English Uniform 921 and Khaki 988. And in the same way as you paint the walk, I'm just going to put a, a base coat of Chocolate Brown. Um, and then once that's dry, I'm just going to dry brush English Uniform Khaki on the top. When you finish that, all you need to do is a bit of PVA glue and some static grass. I'm using the, the Scorch static, static grass from Games Workshop. Um, you can see the results of that on my... Uh, blog. So thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoy it and hope um, this helps you get all your walks painted up nicely, uh, ready to play games with. Thanks for, thanks for watching, feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe and everything else that you guys do on YouTube. Have a good day.